Okay, this lesson concerns what's often the case. Uh, we have things juxtaposed that actually don't conflict with each other, and we have things that are disconnected, which belong together. And sometimes we wonder, is everything a flummox? So at the, uh, through apologetics and outreach, through iamcornet.org of Landmark Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Arkansas, we, uh, show how using a holistic hermeneutic approach that we were trained in at the seminary uh, that even the most complicated or appears to be the most difficult uh, false dichotomy, for example, um, the banter between young versus old. And as a research assistant, I and uh, my colleague I went to seminary with, Dr. Eddie Johnson, we work as research assistants, and we had um, theology, hermeneutics, and language were emphasized. And oh my goodness, uh, it's almost difficult to explain it, but in systematic theology, we would begin where most, most people would end. In hermeneutics, we would include everything. And then in languages, we were uh, taught to recognize and acknowledge the inflectional morphemes, what are the implications? <clears throat> so that we weren't just conjugating verbs, we were noticing how those inflected forms kind of action is emphasized, for example, in Koine Greek, uh, what implication that held. So how did our hermeneutics professor, Dr. John Penn, for example, how did he crack the code in what was often presented as something that could never be answered? And we'll just, for a few seconds, just look at the, how the holistic approach and from the view of what uh, I would call a research assistant, what that, what that looks like and how you can just, you know, set it up uh, and ask the questions. Because at least when the young versus old earth, for example, in earth ageism, that became quite um, emotive, a lot of energy, passion, and of course, things that were completely off script. Uh, the traditional, well, the God of the old earth is not even the God of the Bible. And if you had unfortunately been taught old earth, then you were then told you don't believe the gospel. And uh, now that, that's how people commercialize Christ and merchandise men. And those kind of statements are just when someone doesn't have anything better to say. So, uh, but when they reduced it down to the false dichotomy of either thousands, thousands, or here's the or. So it was either thousands or billions. And, and they lost their audience because you really, you can't do anything about it. Most people couldn't participate in the conversation except just pick a side. And it, it was striking how many people had the energy to pick a side against a person that had once been their brother, for example, and perhaps had been even in a, um, a New Covenant church, probably even ordained by a New Testament church, even that could happen. So it seemed it became like a north versus south. It became a right versus left. It, it, had, it knew no denominational boundaries. It seemed to be viral. It was, I say viral, but it would be an older word. We used to say ecumenical. The conflict was everywhere. You could find people that would buy coffee for you if you were a young earther, even if you didn't believe the gospel, acknowledge scriptural baptism, a new covenant church, just as long as you were, it almost became a, a life, a denomination of its own. Uh, young earthism became an identity, I think. So it looks like a lot of people want something like that, something that has nothing to do with what the Bible says, but everything to do with some high ground, even if we have to take our own shovel and create our own mountain to have the high ground. So, uh, but how was this cracked when it was reduced to this or that? Now you notice when you start talking in terms of thousands or now billions, now you're starting to get into you know things that people can't really talk about. 
I mean, we even skipped millions. We didn't even say millions or billions. We didn't, we just said thousands or billions. And for people to calm down and to be able to think about it was impossible. So Dr. Penn said, well, let's just take all the numbers. And he said, if you put all the numbers in, there's a formula, meaning that it correlates and it relates and it demonstrates. So uh, that's how it began. So it was, um, some had said six to 20,000. This is especially good for those of you that are new to our congregation and you've begun to teach. You want to know how did all this come about? Because when you step into a New Testament church like Landmark Missionary Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Arkansas, you're not stepping into a place where uh, we're still arguing over which colors of the Rainbow Bible to use. You're stepping into a church that's been established in that community for 70 years. The organizing pastor was president of the Missionary Baptist Seminary. So it's been very scholastic and very uh, willing to engage uh, the Bible and to think and to study and of course, uh, that's just a blessing for us. So when this was said somewhere between six to 20,000, uh, the difference was 7,000. So the way we broke it down is started off with just take 250 year increments. And that's how I did it in the real world if I was working on a problem. So I took the difference, so I start with 6 and then add 250, so I said 6, 250, the Bible says as, one day is as a thousand years, so as is in arithmetic an approximate sign. So now we have this, well then Dr. Penn said go get the numbers, so we found where Jesus said 12 hour a day, so he said write that in the little grid, and we did, we did. So we now we have 6,250 years at a 12 hour day. Then he said, okay, include the 12 hour night. 12 hour night, we did. So you notice our grid here. So fill in this blank here. So we put the same thing again, 6,250. And we're just trying it out. So now we got approximately 12,500 years at 24 our day. Okay, that's really good. So now we have 360 days in a year, and that's it. So when I returned to the professor, he said, apply the science to the science. What does that mean? <laughs> so um, that meant that he said, include all the numbers. So uh, one day he says a thousand years, he said, that's a ratio. And the science says, our science that was produced by theologians who use the theology of the Bible and considered the Bible a very credible source of data. And then, so we have one day is a thousand years, so it's a ratio, so there's science. So apply the science, so that's step one. Step two is then he said, apply the science to the science. It's the second step. So what would that be? Well, if you apply the science to the science, you have to go all the way back to something called elementary algebra, where you were learning division and multiplication. And you learn a ratio is an ex a form of expressing uh, division, as in a ratio now, a rational number, which begins with ratio. So he said, apply the science to the science. So he reminded us that there's an inverse relationship between division and multiplication. But now that's painful because when you are presented something that was so strident that caused such division that found people in a binary relationship. It's black or white. It's either this or it's that. It's hot or it's cold. It's right or it's wrong. And it was quite emotional. So you certainly wouldn't see a lot of people trusting that the Bible could help us and that we could use it. And we could use the science produced from the Bible and by the Bible. And we could just... So that led to... Okay, so then let's take... 12,500 years at 24 hour days and 
multiply it by 360 days. That equals 4.5 million days. So that takes care of the day, the day column here, this day here, as he was teaching us. And he was happy to guide us through it because we were willing to do the work. So if you're willing to do the work and the professor is willing to do the guidance, um, he was very patient, you know, as we would uh, go back and collaborate and say, hey, here's what we've got so far. And so now we've got the days set up and we're working it out. And again, it's the most difficult uh, false dichotomy. I guess it's the one that takes the cake. It's because it was perceived as so complicated. So here's the one day here. So now what do we do here? Here We need our thousand years here. And this is a unit of measure, and this is a unit of measure. So we still have our one to a thousand. So then he just said, apply the science, apply the science to the science. So we're applying their science to the science. So again, we remember the inverse relationship. So he just said multiply that by a thousand years. And here we go. All we did was just say, well, we'll add three zeros and that gives us 4.5 billion Changing unit of measure that gives us years there. But that really wasn't the end of it. What he noticed was that we happened to find our terms. What is young? What is old? What's the difference between the time of something's existence and the amount of decay? And of course, when all this settled out, it was quite remarkable because when we come back this direction, we went through the same process. So we started with a thousand to one, so we came back this way. If you take this 4.5, multiply it by a thousand days, remember we're gonna change this from years to days now. Well, when you divide 360 into this, you get approximately 2.78. Multiply that by 4.5, that equals 12.5 billion years. And that's the amount of decay, and that's what occurred to us. using the holistic approach and remembering 0.3, uh, well, I think it's, yeah, one, two, three. No, it's 0.4, define your term. So the age refers to the amount of accrued decay. And we went into the Bible as he had guided us and encouraged us to do, and noticed the instantaneous decay of the fig tree, the instantaneous transformation of water into wine. Uh, so we noticed decay was exponential and growth was incremental. Uh, in cycles of the seasons, referential time of Genesis 114. We noticed uh, prior to the flood, there was thousand year lifespan after approximately 100. So we knew the decay rate had accelerated by 10 times. And now we could say, and explain why uh, the earth could be, as we know it, the Genesis 1-3 repaired earth of Hebrews 1-11-3, uh, then we could, we could notice that that only being a thousands of years ago could still have shown why an accrued rate of billions of years of decay and then why the universe could have 12.5 billion years ago. Now this is just using the Bible. It's just that something that uh, emotional, that complicated, uh, that's placed even scientists on opposite sides, it's placed philosophers on opposite sides, theologians on opposite sides. Uh, but this was from hermeneutics. This was how, well, I call it the genius of Dr. John Penn was, uh, that is, was embedded in his hermeneutic that he developed. What was genius about it, and it is genius about it, and it's still genius of him, is uh, it's, it's, it seems so simple to say, just include all the data. And then to say, apply the science to the science, uh, that was just too obvious. Uh, so he, this is what we call parameters 
in research. So he did not let us go outside the parameters, believing that by staying with the numbers in the Bible, staying with knowing that as is approximate, knowing that we have a statement by even Jesus, we have an example in the Old Testament, they worked six 12 hour days and rested on the seventh. My time's up, but just to, just to show you how hermeneutics helps, uh, even something that to other people's view is just too complicated, it's far out of reach. And now this gives you a lot of confidence when you read your Bible, to notice decay rates, to notice the Bible had knowledge thousands of years ago of the amount of decay and accrued uh, amount and how much has accrued in the universe and also the knowledge of relativity. So there's really nothing of our science that isn't somehow uh, without correlation to the knowledge in the scriptures. So uh, at least you can prove to those who lack confidence in the scriptures that they had knowledge thousands of years ago of what decay rates were, what accrued decay was. They understood relativity. They understood mathematical models. Uh, the Hebrew Bible is very, very sophisticated. So that's, a, that's an interesting thing. Uh, but this can be done with uh, elementary things, third grade. Our director of education at Landmark Mission Baptist Church said this is third grade arithmetic. So uh, I'm glad. But it's still, it's still it's encouraging. And this is just an example of the genius of a holistic approach, which was the genius of the developer of the historic holistic hermeneutic approach. Dr. John Penn. So, and since we don't have a horse in the race, we have a Bible to support. We don't have a flummox. We have a faith once delivered. Uh, we can pause it outwardly if we just take enough time on the front end to accept the data as it's given us. And when someone gives us either one, either thousands or billions, and that's a false dichotomy, then we can take that and we can even uh, reconcile that and, and resolve it. So have a blessed day.